Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I like saying that. Welcome to USS Iowa. My name is Bruce Double D. McRae, and I'm the chairman of the Board of Trustees. You know, this ship is about history. You're all a part of history today. Why? We've got two great legislators that are here right now that helped us obtain $6.7 million for this ship. So a round of applause for them. The first member I'd like to invite up is the, I call it the, the catalyst of this. He came up one day and we talked about it. And I said, member, we need some help. What do you need help on? We got to raise some money for the USS Iowa. Because the Iowa, state of Iowa, gives us dollars. And they've asked us many times, when is the state of California where our ship is ever going to match those dollars? And I tell you what, Assembly Member and Democratic Caucus Chair for the 64th District, Mike Gibson, stated, give it to me. I'll make something happen. So I'd like to introduce my friend, a dear friend of mine for many, many years, Mike Gibson. Thank you very much, Bruce. Uh, I really appreciate you as well as I appreciate our long friendship that we've had. Uh, thank you all for being here. Um, good morning, buenos dias. Uh, it's good to see uh, each and every one of you out here on this morning, on this absolutely day to celebrate. Um, and I'm very grateful. Uh, before I begin saying what I have to say, I want to recognize some very influential individuals, some very key um, individuals that represent this district, and you will hear from these individuals. But I want to take the opportunity uh, to recognize my, my partner um, in the California State Senate, um, who we have to make sure that both houses agree, and certainly Senator Steve Bradford uh, felt it was necessary to support me in this endeavor. So can you just welcome Senator Steve Bradford. I don't see her, if I, if I did see her, I'm sure she'll be up and saying something. Um, a good friend, Supervisor Janice Hahn. <laughs> Our Los Angeles City Council member, Joe Busciano. I don't see him, but let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> the Los Angeles Unified School District Board member um, representing District 7, uh, Tanya Ortiz uh, Franklin. Let's give it up for her. Our Port Police Chief, do I see the Port Police Chief? I don't see um, Thomas, but let's give him a round of applause as well. And certainly my, my good friend, Mr. Tim McCosker. Um, I don't see him, but let's give Tim a round of applause. It's a, it's a beautiful day here at the Los Angeles Port, a perfect day to pay tribute um, to this historic battleship, which happens to be only one of its kind here on the West Coast. In fact, the, near, uh, the nearest battleship museum to us um, is a U.S. Missouri that sits in Pearl Harbor in Hawaii. After that, it's the USS Texas, and that's in Houston, and the other ones are on the East Coast and also Alabama. This is yet another reason why this museum is an undeniable uh, attraction here, on, not only on the West Coast, um, it's a jewel right here in San Pedro in our port of Los Angeles, and I'm glad that it's here. Uh, this is certainly a beloved uh, a battleship that this community has embraced and also loved. And so those who live in San Pedro and the surrounding area, we can certainly stick our chest out with pride because this battleship was chosen to be here <clears throat> Um, in this particular harbor. Uh, we talk about freedom and fighting for our rights, but the servicemen and women, numbering 3,000 at any given time, lived and protected our country uh, from, this very, from this very battleship that we sit on today. In 2025, the nation will celebrate its 200 and 50th uh, birthday for the United States Navy, as we also celebrate the opening of the National Museum of the Surface Navy here at the Battleship Iowa in 2019, at the peak of the pandemic, 
uh, dedicated men and women came together on the surface Navy uh, that was established. Uh, this battleship uh, not only has carried uh, the men and women who has protected um, this country, and I think it's befitting that if we just pause for a moment and give those souls a round of applause for, being, for fighting for us and also defending this country. We never want to forget uh, those men and women who sacrifice uh, their lives uh, for our freedoms and our liberties. And just as I look over uh, this crowd that's here, we know that a number of men and women who serve this country in the United States, um, Navy and all of our military are here. So we say thank you very much for your service to this country. Let's give all our men and women in uniform here a round of applause as well. Today, it is my great honor as a California State Assembly member to present a check. <laughs> to present a check for $6.7 million from the California State budget. It's an investment of our National Museum, a surface um, Navy here um, at this beautiful port of Los Angeles. So it, it gives me great pleasure to present this $6.7 million, uh, $6 million um, check. Uh, this is our investment, and I hope that we'll have other years to come that the state of California is investing um, not only in this great uh, vessel, this great battleship, but also in the lives of the people that will come here each and every day. So, Jonathan, Jonathan who's going to... Let's give it up for Jonathan. Stay right there, Jonathan. Just hold that check. Just <laughs> we don't we don't want him to deposit it. <laughs> Our banker's even here, so I'm doing this. Okay. The museum uh, will build and operation and operate the Freedom uh, Sea Park Pavilion uh, for the benefit of the Los Angeles Harbor region and also those who will participate um, for underserved communities um, in communities that have no green space, no parks, no water space. This will stand as a testament and also provide the kind of beauty and also the kind of support that the communities need. The proposed park is adjacent to the battleship Iowa, will consist of two-thirds acres site, uh, which will be renovated um, into the public park, which is also integrated um, for our, a, com a community center. It will also have an education exhibit, a veterans memorial, and also a maritime display and also public art. And so we know that this battleship and this money will be put to good use for the future of our children and also our community. And I want to say to uh, Bruce Double D McRae and also Jonathan, um, I want to also elevate the name of um, uh, Victor Ibarra, who was my district director, who worked extremely hard uh, while he served me and while he was part of my team to make sure that this come to fruition. I am absolutely glad and also thrilled that we were able to make a small investment in the vision, because I believe without a vision, the people perish. So I want to say thank you very much. Am I calling you doing something? I'll call you. Okay. So um, that's all I have right now. <laughs> thank you. You're going to stay right there. Cause we're gonna, yeah, yeah. Stay right there. Next stop, as he stated, I always say, determined people working together can accomplish anything. If it wasn't for this senator, it wouldn't have gotten through. It takes both houses. And this was a bipartisan uh, support for the Iowa. So our dear friend, Legislator Black Caucus Chair, Senator of the Senate District 35, Stephen Bradford, will you please come up? Uh, Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. It is not much left to be said after that great presentation by Assemblyman Gibson. Let's give him a round of applause for his vision, for his dedication, 
for his determination as well to make sure that this came to fruition. It is truly an honor to represent this port right here, this harbor, uh, the community of San Pedro in the California State Senate. And it has long been a jewel of Southern California. And I am excited about this investment, not only with the Freedom Park, as our assemblyman stated, it's significant that it's called Freedom Park because freedom isn't free. There's been many, many sacrifices for us to enjoy the freedoms that we have in this country. And despite all of our amazing successes, it's still people who are being denied. So I'm honored to have this park called Freedom Park and have, have it remind us of the continued fight for our liberties here in this country. And I'm excited about the 5,000 square foot community center that will also uh, abut here that will provide a multi-purpose learning center for not only our youth, our seniors, our military. Uh, so it's gonna be interactive, so I'm excited about that as well. And just the continued expansion of opportunities here in this harbor. Uh, last year I was able to secure about $3 million for Alta Sea, which is right across the bay that's doing <laughs> tremendous work. So this six points, Seven million is just a continuation of the commitment that Assemblyman Mike Gibson and I have made to the community of San Pedro and the surrounding areas. So I'm excited to be here today, and I thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. It's about children, too. It's about our future. We host many events on this, this ship right here. A lot of them new citizens getting sworn in. But the next person I'd like to bring up Tanya Ortiz Franklin with the LA Unified School District Board Member, District 7, to talk about what it means to the children to continue our legacy and to make this ship the legend it is. Thank you. <laughs> I am just about uh, eight weeks from having my own first uh, baby, so excited to bring her here when, when the space is open. Good morning, everyone. I'm Tanya Ortiz Franklin representing Los Angeles Unified, and we are so grateful for the partnership that has been going on for many years with the USS Iowa and our kids' experiences here, but I'm really excited about the future opportunities for them to come. You know, it's been a real priority for the school district that we have more access to green space, to clean space for kids, because it actually has been proven, research shows, that kids' academic performance increases, their attendance increases, their stress decreases, their aggression decreases, all the good things we want in our schools. And you know, I'll tell you, not all of our kids have access to these kinds of things. It's not surprising that in a district of over 80% free and reduced lunch, our kids on campus on average have less than 10% of their campuses as green space. And so we need to not only grow that on our campuses, which I'll tell you a little bit about in a second, but we need access in our communities so kids can experience things on the weekends with their families in the afternoons and evenings. So just last week, the LA Unified School Board passed a new resolution to get all of our schools to 30% green space. Only 15% of our schools are there right now. So 85% of our kids are not yet, our schools, sorry, are not yet meeting this goal that we have. But I think having partnerships like what we're gonna see here will help us get there faster because it's not just about the access on campus, it's the access in communities. And so I'm excited for the art to come with that as well. That's been a big priority for us at the district and across the state. And I'm just so excited for our students and families to know that this exists for them. Right here about a mile away, less than a mile away, one of our elementary schools, you might know it if you see it, um, is a prime example of this. And I, I just wanted to share, we got our state test scores back recently. And only about 15% of the students are proficient on ELA and math in a nearby elementary school. So just think about that, 15% in third through fifth grade, just less than a mile from here. If we wanna increase their attendance, we wanna increase their academics, we need holistic support for them to really be prepared for the next grade level. It can't just be drill and kill with math and literacy. We have to show them connections to the world, make it real for them, make it fun for them. And so a space like this is going to help that grow and is gonna help kids get ready for the next grade level for college, career, and life. That's just one of 175 schools that I get to serve in a district of nearly 1,000 schools. So thank you, Assemblymember Gibson. Thank you, Senator Bradford. Thank you for this partnership. It's gonna be amazing for kids and families. I can't wait until they get to come to see it all. Thank you.
Remember, it's about legacies. It's about legends. Next up, Arlie Baker, Senior Communications Director with the Port of LA. You're going to come up and talk, and he's going, really? I didn't plan on it. But uh, um, come on up. Hey, good morning, everyone. And what a great morning to be here at America's Port. Welcome. Um, first off, on behalf of the port, I want to thank Assemblymember uh, Gibson and Senator Bradford for securing the budget earmark that led to this funding. The efforts of your teams underscore your commitment to the Iowa, our port community, and the Department of the Navy. And we owe you a great of gratitude for all your work and your effort to get us here today. Now the, the timing for this funding could not be better because this year we are celebrating the 10th anniversary of the Iowa coming down here to the LA waterfront and the return of LA Fleet Week. So both of these milestones are made possible through the strong partnership and collaborative relationship that, that Jonathan and his team have with our port organization. And uh, since the construction of the cruise ship Promenade over here uh, in 2004, the port has spent more than $1 billion on public access infrastructure to create a pedestrian-friendly LA waterfront. But it's the institutions and attractions like Altice, Cabrillo Marine Aquarium, the future West Harbor development, and the future National Museum of the Surface Navy at Battleship Iowa that are making and will make this waterfront a vibrant destination, not only for fun and recreation, but for education, cultural enrichment, job training, job diversification, and community engagement. So the next two, or two to three years will be exciting and transformative for this waterfront, and we are thrilled that the National Surface, uh, National Surface Navy Museum will play a central role in that transformation. Thank you, everyone. I don't know, how many people have been around a while that remember Ports of Call? Raise your hand. Thank you. Because the next person we have coming up right now is Elise Swanson, CEO of San Pedro Chamber of Commerce. This is where my dad would take us. We're a poor family living in Long Beach. But when we wanted a vacation, we came to San Pedro. God rest your soul, Dad. But that's what we did, to feed the seals, to talk with the fishermen, to walk about. And that's what we need to continue to doing. So our CEO. Good, good morning, everyone. It's just so thrilling for me to be here today. And I think you are hearing a common theme, collaboration, partnership. And I feel so fortunate. I tell people we get so much done in this community because of the incredible partnerships with Assemblymember Gibson, State Senator Steve Bradford, our school board member Tanya Ortiz Franklin. I want to thank you for your commitment to this community to help us grow and thrive. We truly appreciate you and all that you do for our community and for the for greater um, uh, harbor area communities. But I just um, want to say today, and I can't believe that it's been 10 years, yep. 10 years. The San Pedro Chamber of Commerce was one of the very early supporters. Our board of directors knew that this battleship would be a true jewel, and that word has been used previously, but a true jewel on the LA waterfront to help us increase tourism, to sustain our local economy, and to increase our um, economic growth in the area. This battleship sits in the middle of the San Pedro Cultural and Arts District. We're one of 14 districts in the state of California recognized for our unique arts and cultural community. And this is such an important piece of that district, drawing um, visitors from across the nation. We have the privilege as the Chamber of Commerce is acting as the greeters and tourism ambassadors for LA Fleet Week. And it is so exciting to greet hundreds of thousands of people that are so happy to be in this community. So Assembly Member, Senator, I want to thank you for securing this funding because I know that the pavilion and the surface 
Surface Museum will be one more piece that we get to promote and add to this wonderful district. So thank you everybody for being here today. And thank you all of you. I see so many people in the room. Jenny from Altisee, Jenny Sova from the Battleship Iowa. We've worked together for so many years. And I feel, Arlie, you're right, the next three to five years are gonna be so exciting as all of these programs start to roll out. So thank you everyone. It's a joy to represent you as your president of our local chamber. Thank you. Mr. President, I would like to get another 6.7. No, I'm kidding. I don't know. I don't know if POTUS is hearing that, but I've uh, I met Jonathan a little over 10 years ago, smoking cigars. Not that we do that. It's very bad. We we don't. Not that we do that. Um, and he was about I don't know 210 pounds heavier than what he is right now. Um, and he became not just a friend, he became a brother. He is like family uh, to me. And I tell you what, uh, what he's done with a group of volunteers, and I'd like all the volunteers to please stand. <laughs> this ship does not survive without the volunteers. And thank you all for what you do, and thank you for your service before and after. But the passion of Mr. Gibson's voice, if you heard him, when he talks about the souls on this ship, I mean, I'd go to church and listen to you preach, sir, because you've got passion. You've got that passion. But I'd like to introduce somebody who has passion for this ship, Jonathan Williams. Jonathan. Karoosh, come up here. That's, this is our banker from uh, F&M Bank. Um, go ahead and put that in the bank. Appreciate it. <laughs> That's why I was holding it. Thank you all for uh, joining us on this special day. A shout out to over a half a million followers that are watching us virtually right now, and we're going to spread throughout the country with this message because we truly are a national organization. Uh, Assembly Member Gibson, Senator Bradford, thank you for your advocacy and your work to uh, make this happen for the LA waterfront and everything we do here in San Pedro. It's important. I, I will tell you, uh, uh, brag a little bit because that's what I do. Um, shout out to the crew because we wouldn't be here without this crew. This crew is absolutely amazing. We've got uh, several thousand volunteers across the nation and about three 300 active plus a uh, regularly a month plus a paid staff and it really makes it happen. I personally uh, travel quite a bit and so for those of you that are interested, I flew back from Kansas City last night uh, and fly back to Kansas City in about two hours um, for this event. Don't worry, I travel a lot. Ask anybody that knows me, I'm always on a plane. Um, but I do want to tell you, I was just in Iowa meeting with some of our supporters in Iowa and I said the state of California came in with 6.7, it's time for you guys to step up your game. And so I'm heading back to Iowa, several meetings through the rest of the week, and a uh, shout out to our Iowans who uh, really supported us with three and a half million to get this whole thing going. What we have become is absolutely tremendous, and a lot of folks uh, in LA don't know what this ship stands for. We've got three pillars of service in veteran services, education, and community. I see some of our veteran service advocates here. Shout out to you guys for your service to our nation and continuing to support our veterans um, with essential programs and services, everything from uh, helping house our veterans to food insecurity, and now we're really starting to focus on the job placement side of things. Of course, education, thousands of students annually, our education directors here uh, that we bring on board for free um, to do STEM education right here on the waterfront. And then most proud of the community side, which we hardly ever talk about. Uh, Fleet Week, or we mentioned LA Fleet Week, which has become the benchmark of Fleet Weeks across the nation at this point. I'll be in Memphis in two weeks with Jenny um, talking about next year's Fleet Weeks, and I will tell you that the presentation I saw on it was really more directed on everybody following the LA model, which I was really proud of, of course. But it's not only that. You may have noticed a COVID test booth down on the pier. We provide free space for COVID testing over two years. That's us providing free space to the county for COVID testing for our residents here in the local community. 
We do disaster planning and disaster response. Uh, so when you saw the Mercy mission and the Mercy, USNS Mercy that pulled up here, it was us right in the middle of that, supporting the Navy, working with the city and the port and the other partners to help support that mission, including even uh, community hospital beds during the uh, COVID pandemic and preparing for a major 7.8 earthquake in LA, uh, which happens during Fleet Week, and we're gonna actually start expanding that too. So we're involved in so much in this uh, city, but now we're taking it on a national level with the National Museum of the Surface Navy that represents every sailor that ever served aboard a ship since 1775. Think about how many millions of people that is, how many families are touched. And I like to say it is our Navy and our sea services and our Coast Guard that make sure that cargo gets here safely every single day. And unfortunately, uh, it's time that our public understands that their life and everything that they've come to, to live for um, is really based on freedom of the seas and the movement of cargo across our oceans and our commerce. It is a big deal. It is important to our nation, important to our economy. And that is our goal is to raise that awareness and educate the future generations on what it means to be a nation, uh, an international nation reliant on commerce and cargo and what it is to be a maritime nation. So it's important to do that. And one last closing, a lot of folks don't realize how big the National Museum of the Surface Navy is. It is the only congressionally designated national museum west of the Mississippi. There's only 12 of them in the nation and we are one of them. Um, that was a, a, a great success um, and a great success for the city of LA and a great success for the LA waterfront, which we're really excited to see what's happening here over the next couple years. And so I wanna thank everybody for joining us today. Thank you to our virtual audience. Um, if you didn't come here in San Pedro, I'm gonna inundate you with more of our ads over the next two weeks to make sure you know how important this is to our community and our waterfront. Thank you, thank you Senator Bradford, Assemblymember Gibson. Thank you, uh, Tanya, for showing up and we truly appreciate everything you guys do.